Let's finish answering teacher D's questions, shall we? I think that's a good idea. How's your Sunday? Mine is kind of slow but fun, interesting in a good way, I suppose. I already made my breakfast, or rather I'm making my breakfast. <coughs> yes, the voice is still not back yet, but we're getting there. Making my breakfast, gonna answer teacher D's questions. We might go on a hike again. That's the plan, you know? Hold on. As they say, when you make plans, what do they say? Do you instill the same values that you learn as a young girl in Cape Town? Oh, okay. So the, uh, the second before she's talking about my children, kind of how I raise my children. So I think she is now asking if I instill uh, values that I learned as a young girl in Cape Town. Do you feel that they should know a bit of Kosa, which is my first language? And do you think... <clears throat> This is not gonna be a chaotic video. <sighs> Do you feel they should know a bit of Kosa language and their cultural background? How challenging has identity been for your mixed race children? Do you regret anything or what you would re or what would you redo if you had the opportunity? What is your relationship with social media and why do you disappear for years only to come back again? Do I still instill values? You know, I don't know if I instill in my children values that I was taught as a child. At least I don't if I do, I don't think I do so in intentionally like I don't sit out to you know what I mean so maybe I do maybe I don't but I think I probably do because I've always been this person whom you are seeing now whether I was 11 whether now I'm 37 6 30 how old am I again 36 so so maybe maybe not but probably not a very good answer, but I think that's that's the most truthful version um, to that. And as far as my raising my children and then being mixed race and whatnot, race is not really a conversation that we have in my household. And I think, okay, maybe I do instill the same values as I did as a child, because for me, race wasn't a conversation in my household. Um, and I was sort of living at a, a post apartheid era in South Africa, like fairly, you know, because I was in school, primary school, just a couple of years after South Africa became a democratic nation. So race was in the air, but it wasn't a conversation that we were having at home. We were just people at home living life. Um, and anytime race came into a conversation, it's when I was out in the world and it never really race has never really been a thing in my life it's never been a thing it's never been a uh, something that impacts my life holds me back yada 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 you know and maybe some people might say otherwise because I was raised in like an informal settlement or I don't know what it's called right now but a place for previously disadvantaged black and colored people colored is not a derogatory term for those who are americans and watching this in south africa we literally have a race of people called colored clearly um i hope that's still like an okay term in south africa too so the neighborhood that i grew up in was this informal settlement and we had colored people we had black people spoke with Tulsa, spoke of the gods like and even though the setup was that of potential racial kind of a setup because like in the more affluent areas there was white people but in the way that I was raised I was just raised as a human being I the, I was just a human being like my mom or dad weren't like sitting with me and saying okay well white people are this color people are that you know black people are this or because you're black that like I never got that kind of an upbringing of because you're black, you must do things this way. Because you're black, you must da da da. Because you're black, da -da -da. and because we're black, we can't. Or because we're black, we must. Because I just never got that. So I raised my children that same way. 
they're just human beings like i don't even think they like the term mixed race gets used around here in this home it just doesn't i think that's something that we're just human and they're human and we're just having a human experience and and that's how i'm raising them with regards to that is that even the question hold on their identity is not their race their identity is who they choose to be in this world and how they you know they maybe that's very maybe i'm being naive or an idealist or you know i don't not recognize race i do feel that even i have my own biases and things of that nature i probably do i think we maybe all do however i don't define myself a certain way when it comes to race like i don't go out in the world and being like as a black woman blah, blah, blah. like okay i'm black and then what isn't it is like and then what i define myself as as a human being like that's where identity comes in for me and i i think without being super intentional about it or being like paying too much attention to it it's the same thing for my children um they're not being raised as, as this as that they it's just like go be a good person and do the best you can and like live your life kid yeah and that's that do i regret anything and i suppose by that you mean like from all the failures <laughs> uh, do i regret anything from all the failures that, that i've had in my life i suppose do i regret anything no i don't i don't i mean there are if i was speaking to my kids there there is advice that i would give them in life but i don't think that's from regret that's just from living and learning right like for example i really desire for my children to go out in the world and of course be the best versions of themselves that they can possibly be but i think the biggest thing that i would like to teach them is to mind their own business mind their own business and let me explain what i mean like sometimes you spend a lot of or utilize your mental real estate thinking about what other people are going to think of you regarding a decision or or even making up stories of like oh she's probably saying this about me or oh no because they must have misunderstood me and they're probably going to think this i don't know i feel like i spent a lot of time as a younger person even you know a couple of years ago thinking a lot more about the bad things i think people are thinking of me is actually just not being comfortable in being myself right and that was a waste of time and through that i was creating those experiences so whenever i thought oh they must be oh they must think i'm like this awful failure and ugh, and this and that okay then they would end up thinking that because i created that i like i projected this experience and therefore it would play out in my life so i would like to help my children yes mind their own business and not spend too much time thinking about what others will or will not think of them and just just live from here out there i'm going to stop now with all of this cuz i feel like i'm saying the same thing well, i think we're just going to carry on just live just live from here and and be very very intentional about paying attention to how you feel and being really kind towards yourself and understanding that the world is essentially a wonderful place to be in and it's totally okay to be you and you are perfectly imperfect as you and whether you are fantastic that day or not so fantastic that day it's all okay but don't don't pay too much attention on there pay a lot of attention here because that's going to create 
what you actually desire. And even when an experience doesn't look pretty or look nice or it's super challenging in a way that feels uncomfortable, that's okay for a bit. Like, it's okay to sit still. Sit still, take notice, pay attention, and figure out how you feel about it, and then move from there. I feel like I'm speaking in code. Does that make, did that make sense? I hope so. Okay. And as far as teaching them and their cultural background, my kids have not spent time really in South Africa. They haven't. Uriah has been to South Africa, Zuri hasn't. So they haven't been exposed to it like fully, right? And through just my own teachings, I'm, yo, okay, yeah, no, I just, yeah, I haven't really done much of that. They hear, it's close, so they hear if I say things, they know some words, if I'm speaking to family, friends on the phone or, or whatnot. So they're exposed to it in that sense. But I feel as if the kids learn about my culture through me. Because there's some things, there are things that are like, you know, hossa cultural things are, that I probably don't know much about either that they haven't learned. Mind you, not, I grew up in Cape Town. I grew up, I grew up in Cape Town. Like I was, I didn't grow, grow up in, in a culturally embedded atmosphere. I grew up in a space where on our street, you know, we spoke Afrikaans, Klaasa, they were Angolans. And then I went to school in English speaking school and with people like Afrikaans backgrounds from different part of the world to English speakers and this and, and I feel like I was very much influenced by many, many, many different cultures. And so the Klaasa, 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 Klaasa culture was more influenced in during the school holidays and go visit my grandparents and our family on that side you know because even on my mom's side you know yeah pratwa they are you know they are prataring <laughs> because there's the Afrikaans speakers and so forth so i'm saying all of this to say there there's just there is a lot that Zuri and Uriah are still to be exposed to as far as what my culture is because I'm not a very good teacher and I don't sit down and go all right kids here's a book on South Africa or whatever the case may be food yes I cook South African food quite often so they do get to experience that but I'm just gonna let my family you know give them that cultural vibe i'm just gonna do the whole it takes a village to raise a kid thing and let them do that part do i okay we did that what is your relationship with social media you disappear for years only to come back again ain't that true <laughs> ain't that true let me tell you i was born ready for this question my i love social media i have met so many great people through social media and became became like super close friends. Case in point, when I mentioned being in Harlem hospital, psych ward, hospitalized and whatnot, I went to New York through a Facebook friend. So I was getting divorced in the process of it all. And then I had this nervous breakdown. I think that's what we can call it. Many, many, like unwonderful, <laughs> I don't know how to put it anyway. I am now like remembering all the things. A lot happened. Like I, I literally lost my mind. And before then I was super active on social media and I, I had this online business and in health and fitness and whatnot. Okay. So then I, I, I get divorced or I start the process. I have this massive breakdown, like mentally couldn't quite understand life in the world or anything was not taking care of myself like i'm talking like not bathing and da, 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 not eating not not taking care of my children the way that i needed to and i my mind wasn't all there right and if you've ever watched the movie a beautiful mind that started happening i was writing day and night and not sleeping and 
I was like drinking like gallons of water. I had gallons of water lined up in my kitchen and just like chugging them. And then I would like drive around aimlessly and I would like stick things on the wall and I just like wouldn't stop writing and it was just this weird thing. And then like my mind would make up things that aren't real and don't really exist. So then my mind would like make connections and things that don't connect and I'd remember histories that I've never lived and, and like my family's histories that they know nothing about and, and I thought I was like psychic and, and then I would see things and then like something started to talk to me that wasn't just the voice in your head uh, that you hear and then like there were multiple of those voices that were talking in my head and then like the voices would tell me where to go, what to do and all this kind of stuff. And there was like a nice voice and a not so nice voice. And then, and then I thought like one was the voice of God and then I thought it was Jesus. And then I was like, wait, so if there's God, does God have a God? And then, oh my gosh, God has a God who has a God. And then there's like an, a, a bigger God. And then, and then, and then one day I went shopping for like, all of these vitamins and I was at um, this health store vitamin cottage and my hand was like leading to where I was going and my eyes were just like this and then my hand would go buy that one and then mm, buy this one just like that you know like proper gone 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 hey, gone because I was so isolated during just this divorce period no one really knew this was happening and I think my kids sensed it because they would cry a lot and all that kind of stuff and, and uh, yeah so no one knew but then I would like send really crazy messages to friends and then one day I just like threw away all of my stuff what how did we get here we were answering a question I just like threw away all of um our stuff like furniture i started throwing things down the stairs in this case my kids were with their dad that particular weekend and that was the other thing like i was taking care of the children most of the time and he was he was working out of town so he would come on the weekend and stay with his parents and take care of the kids and so this weekend he he um had the kids but then i like woke up in some random day and i drove around all day long and then i came home and then i was like i can smell the paint oh everything is toxic this house is toxic and then i started like throwing things down the stairs crazy behavior just mad madness mad mad behavior and that's where things changed like that particular day i put like a full tank of gas and I, like i was barely wearing any clothes i wore like this very see-through white shirt and then like i called the police on my children's dad for what for what? Anyway, because I was crazy. Um, and then, and then I like, I thought I was going to die and like all of these guys, I have no other word to use, but except for crazy, crazy, all these crazy ideas would come into my head. And then I was supposed to be picking up my kids that day. Again, no one knew. This is why today I believe in asking for help when you needed it. Because before the, you know, the crack happened, I was super stressed out. I was super stressed out and feeling so alone and so deeply depressed and just like not good. And uh, the heater just went out. Should we wait for it? Okay, I turned off the heater so that we can quickly finish this <laughs> and my breakfast is ready. <laughs> so let's round it off. Right, so manic, manic behavior. And that particular day when I picked up my kids, I didn't go home. Like I, I, I it, again, if you watch that movie called A Beautiful Mind and the guy's coming up with like Russell Crowe, I believe, with conspiracies and that was me. That movie just put me as Russell Crowe, that was me. And I just like picked up the kids that day, drove around aimlessly, running away from danger that didn't exist, accusing people of things they, they did not do, calling police, on like crazy behavior. 
drove around, drove around, drove around, literally ended up in another state. And sometime, either the next day or the next night, we, ha we ended up in some hotel. And guys, it's like so blurry, so blurry. I'm not even sure of the memory and just so manic. And one of the nights, I ended up jumping a red light and a car hit us. And that's what happened. And literally the jumping the red light, there was a voice in my head that said, all right, now here's the big test. You can do it. Like, I don't even know if you can, I don't want you to try and imagine it, but yeah, even now sitting here, I, I'm like, what? It feels so surreal to me. It feels so strange to me so strange so strange the, that voice told me and and i like put my foot on the gas or the accelerator right through the robot seeing that they were red and the voice was like do it now 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 and i did it i had a car accident thank heavens no one was hurt in the car physically and it took a while emotionally for the kids to recover from that and for me to recover from that and for their dad to essentially forgive me for that. I mean, seriously, if I was in his shoes, I, it's so strange to think, like, would I have forgiven him for putting my children in that level of danger? But then again, if I had known that he wasn't in his right mind, but still I'd be mad as hell, right? At first, like I would just be mad, like how could you? So I'm so grateful that he had forgiven me as the other parent for, for that entire experience. Even though I do understand that it wasn't me, it was me, but it wasn't me. So now we come to the question about social media. Before this experience, I was so active on social media, really enjoying it and having fun with it because I feel like that's what social media does for us. Like it builds community and camaraderie and, and many other things happen, but I don't involve myself in any drama and whatever. I just live my life and I enjoy communicating with the people who enjoy what I have to offer. And I don't think anything more of it than that and and build like really beautiful strong connections with people like that social media for me so i was doing a lot of that and after that period naturally i stepped away from social media because then i went from hospital psych ward da, 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 to psych ward and respite center to respite center and i then started taking medication at one particular respite center and when i took that first medication I went from this manic state that culminated in this car accident and then I went into the depths of depression. Like it was like, Whoa! and in that space, I wanted nothing to do with social media. I felt such deep shame for everything that had happened and for everything that I had done and everything I had gone through. I just wanted to crawl into like a ball and like go to sleep forever, you know? And so then during all of that going to sleep and wanting to just kind of disappear, I just didn't participate in social media. I didn't, I didn't, I really didn't. I was scared. I, like, what was I going to say? I didn't trust myself either. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I felt deep shame for how I had harmed a lot of people in my life with my words. And so I just didn't want to harm anybody else anymore. I thought the world would be a better place without me being in it. So that's, that's why I moved away from social media. And even when I went through my healing journey after that, and you know, putting together the building blocks for who I wanted to be. And that whole period took maybe two years because it was only in 2019 that I started posting again on social media. It's when I had found a voice, like literally I had even lost the ability to speak for some time. 
I would just listen to people and not even be able to fully comprehend what they were saying. And the words would kind of come as to the fact that I would need to respond because the person would keep quiet and I would need to respond. And I open my mouth and no words would come. So when I finally found literally my voice again and finally recognized who I wanted to be. I didn't have anything figured out. Not that I even have things figured out now. I'm still on my path, you know? I then wanted to connect with people again. Yeah. Yeah. And even now, there are times, maybe two or three months, where I will not post. I don't know if that's going to happen again in future. Like I can't make promises of I'm here, I'm here to stay. You know, I can't make those kinds of promises. The most recent one, when I stepped away from social media, it's because I was going through a surgery. And while going through a surgery, I was also desiring stillness. I, I knew that I wanted a certain change again in my life. I didn't know what the change is. So, I was taking that advice to when you don't know, just be still, just be still. <laughs> so I was being still and connecting with who I am and who God is for me in my life. And for that process, I really wasn't in the emotional space of sharing. I have given myself the grace to be who I am when I am that, however that, or whatever that looks like. I don't feel the pressure to share everything and anything all the time, every time. When I am in a space where sharing is appropriate and it feels right, I do. When I am not, I don't. And I think and I know actually that that is okay. Right now, if you would ask me today, I don't see myself stepping away from social media this year or anytime soon for like a long period of time. But if I do this time around, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a little disclaimer of saying, hey, I need some, I don't know, TLC with self. So I'll check you in two months, you know? I'll do that rather than like, bye, without saying anything. But we, yeah, life is so good. Life is so good because we just, we just continue to just become more of ourselves, which is such a great thing. We just do. So nothing is ever the same as it was yesterday or even one minute ago. And I'm not the same as I was even an hour ago. There's, there's, there's always something. There's always like, I don't know, a movement of some sort, like a very sweet change. It's so constant. I love it. It's constant. Sometimes it's difficult to comprehend when you're not ready for it. But when you just open yourself up to the flow of life, life is life, life is life, and life is life. So life is life. Okay. Oh, Teacher D, you have really unlocked something within me with these questions of yours. All right, so uh, that's the social media one. You know what? I didn't, I, we're going to do a part three because I need to eat now and I need to have like a moment with music <laughs> and I need to go on a hike slash walk because a hike is a lot of work. We're going to do a walk somewhere pretty and just breathe from having shared all of that. I want to treat myself with kindness and you do the same. Let's go. Let's go on this nice walk. The Facebook friend that I had mentioned, 
Her name is Zanele and she's an angel on earth. She took me in when I had nowhere to go. She let me stay with her family and not paying rent for months and months and months while I was rehabilitating um, in her home in New York City. So that's social media for me. Like that's, I feel spoiled on social media because it's not just Zanele, but you know, she's my girl, my fave. Um, and she was a complete stranger. And she did that for a fellow stranger. And that's why I love social media because there's people like that. And there are millions of people like that. It's people, it's not numbers, it's human beings. Hello. Hey. Can I take just a picture oh, of the who? Sure. I've been obsessed with animals lately. I wasn't an animal person and now all I want is to be around animals. Oh. Oh. May I? Yeah. Oh, hi, baby. Hi, Bella. Oh, Bella's like, who's this stranger, mommy? Okay, I'll let Bella go. Thank you so much. You guys have a good day. walk was definitely the best idea again I feel like this is the perfect place where we leave this video thank you for watching I, I feel like taking a nap right here <laughs> which means I must go home just after a little bit I wish I had my swimsuit and I can get in maybe that's the next video may you have a beautiful Sunday Okay. I kept the kiss to myself. I was like, but it's for you and for me. Okay, bye. Your heartache, it kills me, but your loving, it thrills.